This action research was born out of my desire to be a part of a wind of change that is transforming the way learning opportunities are presented. I wanted to offer my students access to instruction and guidance in the comfort of the lounge or the privacy of their bedroom and to arrive in the classroom ready to discuss and investigate. This approach is what contemporary educators call the flipped classroom model. While some practitioners are choosing to use a variety of media and the work of others to present their courses, I decided to take up the challenge of making original media to present the syllabus of the IB Environmental Systems and Societies course and to share my lessons to the global classroom via YouTube. Online teaching is an emerging field in education, but we must not lose sight of the fact that media has been used in the classroom since the days of radio. I have seen many of my own classes literally go to sleep when outdated and improper media are selected for classroom use. I have also observed that media is seen by some students as a sign of an incompetent teacher. The flipped model addresses this by taking the media out of the class time and it allows students to get access to the lecture and the guided practice of a lesson in advance. This has the benefit of allowing more time for student-student interaction and student-teacher interaction. In addition, it allows learners the opportunity to replay the teacher's presentation at any time. While the model has certain appealing aspects, it can be criticized for serving one learning style while sacrificing another. Some learners may thrive on the interpersonal nature of a face-to-face -face lesson, with the teacher pausing to share interesting, albeit irrelevant information about his career or personal life. On the other hand, some students may feel a sense of empowerment in having the flexibility to learn when they feel ready to do so. Finally, some kinesthetic learners may enjoy having extended time to do hands-on activities. This action research aims to investigate some of the implications of using a flipped classroom model to teach IB Environmental Systems at Shanghai American School Pushi Campus. I take up this research with awareness of the issue of researcher bias. My own passion for presenting online material is tempered by my joy of teaching a lesson with spontaneity and great questions. Those little bits of teacher magic that inspire more questions and sets the class into a frenzied debate. I believe that good teachers have good answers and great teachers ask great questions, but the best teachers inspire great thinkers. It is against this background that I set about my work in 2012-13. In the beginning, I wanted to test the limits of my high-flying SAS students. I presented an extended lesson with multiple activities spanning 40 minutes. The seven specific objectives to be addressed in that lesson are listed here. Upon completion, I collected the following data from my class of 12 students. Five students looked at the full video. Two students did not look at it at all, and another five looked at some of it. Ten students felt the lesson was easy to follow, while two found it was hard to follow. Eight students felt the lesson was good because it helped them to clarify their understanding of a specific topic, and three out of eleven identified that topic as the pyramid of productivity. Six students felt that the activities associated with the assignment were too much. And four out of 11 respondents believed that they were ready for class the next day. 
I agree that the video lesson was too long and the activities that were to be completed prior to class were too much. I started to think that 10 to 15 minutes would be an ideal time with a single meaningful assignment included. I also gave some thought to slowing the pace of my talk and using more edits to remove what I considered to be unnecessary repetition. I feel that with an online or recorded lesson, the student has the power to pause, reflect, and rewind. So teacher reinforcement is less essential and should be compromised in favor of brevity. My next step was to deliver three shortened lessons with less activities. No formal feedback was elicited from students, but my observations revealed that students were more comfortable with these shortened lessons. The SAS video portal ViewCounter and Moodle provided data to show that all students accessed the videos and several of them did so on multiple occasions. Summative assessment revealed good understanding of most of the concepts presented. My next step was to teach a complete unit with the content delivered via video recordings. The assigned class time was to be used for mastering lab skills. This was a slight departure from the traditional flipped classroom model if such a thing actually exists. Uh, students were provided with videos and they used the class time not to discuss the content of those videos specifically, but to do lab activities which were relevant to the unit content, but not directly aligned with the content of the video lessons. At the end of this unit, the class averaged 70% in an IB style unit test. This is equal to a six on a seven point scale used by the IBO. In light of the fact that SAS had a school average a 5.5 in the 2012 exam, this was an expected result for a unit test. The data collected from students reveal that 10 out of 11 watched all of the lessons. 5 of 11 did so twice or more. 9 out of 11 indicated that they would use the videos to review for the semester final exam. Significantly, only 1 of 11 completed all lesson activities and only 5 of 11 gave some thought to those lesson activities. My next step followed directly from this data and I decided to present another unit via recorded media but this time to have a greater emphasis on discussing the contents in the classroom. At the end of this unit the class performance remained at a similar level to the previous unit, with the small gain being statistically insignificant. I felt that there were some students who may have winged it through the discussions without doing the necessary preparation. And my next step is to continue to present the course content by video lessons, but I'm formulating a list of recommended strategies for maximizing student learning. I believe that it's imperative for the student to actively engage in the lesson by pausing to reflect. I also suggest making a review of the lesson with the audio muted to serve as an effective means of self-assessment. I believe that data should be elicited from students at the end of the major exam in December 2013. This would be a high-stakes, all-inclusive assessment spanning almost the full syllabus. The fact that my incomplete YouTube channel covering the course showed a sudden jump in hits and hours of use on the weekend before the IB final exam suggests to me that many students are seeking online lessons for review. I look forward to assessing the extent to which students use the video lessons at a later point in the course. I also collected during the course of the year some data from other sources. After using one of my eight-minute videos with my biology students in grades 11 and 12, I found that over 80% wanted more instruction like this. When asked about the time for a lesson, 11 out of 29 said that 10 minutes was suitable, and 13 out of 29 
preferred 10 to 30 minutes. This provides more data to support a time of maybe 10 to 15 minutes as the ideal. I also did some online lessons with Physics 9 students and my preliminary observations suggest that flipped classrooms may be better suited to more mature students. But I believe that brief recorded instruction is very useful for less mature students, especially in areas like physics and math. And I believe that media in the classroom is not new, but the replacement of the introduction and the guided practice of a lesson by a video recording is part of the flipped classroom. Most of my students are embracing it, but there have been some valid points raised about the need for spontaneity and having the burning issue addressed when it's actually on fire. I see a key role for it in courses spread over two years, like the IB. At the very least, the video lessons will provide an effective means of review for the final examination. I plan to concentrate on recorded tutorials for my IB biology classes in 2013 to 15, devoting time to the issues that my students need specific guidance on. New ways to enhance online delivery are appearing on a regular basis. During my work this year, I found the TED-Ed site and edcanvas.com. Both of these allow teachers the power to link YouTube videos to lesson content via an easy-to-use interface. YouTube itself allows a presenter to make links to other videos within their presentation. I believe that the traditional classroom is changing. The pace at which educators are placing quality media online suggests that some teachers will choose to become full-time facilitators of learning and guides on the side, while others become the edu-gurus of the 21st century. Some learners will prefer face-to-face -face delivery, however, and will thrive in this setting. And this is undoubtedly a key issue in deciding how to chart the course of education in the coming years. So what am I taking away from this year of research in the flipped classroom? I found that students were happy to use the recorded video lessons. Student achievement on IB type exams remained the same. Students were willing to use the video lessons for long-term review. Students in my class and others around the world are using YouTube to learn. Students need coaching in how to maximize the use of media. Face-to-face -face is, to me, the most effective means of formative assessment. The optimum time for a lesson online is 8 to 13 minutes. And I take away a whole lot of improved media production skills.